Metal Market Wrap-Up, and this wrap-up is for the evening of Thursday, and we are now at the 22nd of August 2024. The end of the Democratic National Convention takes place tonight. Chicago made it through it. I can tell you the restaurants are crying. They did not get the business they were geared for. I can tell you that the amount of protesters that the city had prepared for and the press had prepared you for did not take place. The riots did not take place. The arrests that I know of so far in the paper, under 100. Uh, and that's pretty well-behaved protesters. They got to have their say. It's not over. I mean, tonight you still got to get through this and everybody going home. But all in all, kudos for the city. Did a great job. And for those that came, the weather has been absolutely stunning. No rain, 79 degrees during the day, uh, high 60s at night. It's been beautiful. All right. Tomorrow's going to be interesting as can be. What we have tomorrow is you get home sales data. That'll come out at 9. At the same time, Federal Reserve Chair Powell will make his speech in Jackson Hole. And as you know, the algorithm trades are going to look at this. They're set. Every time he mentions keywords, the markets will move on it as they jump in and out. We'll talk about that in a minute. You're going to get a cattle on feed report at 2 o'clock. And today, if you watch, the grain markets came down very hard as Canada went into the strike mode for 80% of the country. The two main railroads uh, went on full strike today. And so what that did is people couldn't get to work. Everything got snarled. As is always the case, what happens when that takes place? The government steps in, and they did. And they ordered forced arbitration between the union and the railways, and now the trains will start running again, and we will see how the forced arbitration goes, where it leads to everything. A lot of expert witnesses will be called in, and you try to find a common ground with it, all right? I don't know that it's binding arbitration. We'll find that out in days as to how this all works. but. Now that relief on the grains probably get a little bit of a bounce in it, and you're already getting a bounce in some of the other markets. And to show you that, you're up tonight in the stock indices. Gold came back a little bit. Silver's losing something to it. Most of the currency's getting a little bit of a bounce here. A lot of traders getting hurt right now in the Mexican peso. They've been trying to figure out what to do with that. And very simply, you know, next month you have the change of government. There's going to be a change in the judicial uh, system. The market has been under pressure because it doesn't know who's going to win this presidential race. If you look at the polls, it's a horse race. And you'd expect that. You'd expect that actually uh, Ms. Harris is going to get more of even a bump next week. That's just how the momentum goes. But that's when then the Republicans come back into play. And we will see if the Donald can get smart enough to stop attacking the people and attack the policies and get everything going. Will there be a debate? I'm still not convinced there'll be a debate. I don't know what they're going to do right here. Bonds and notes, uh, they, today you added yield back. Tonight you're pretty stable with it. Cotton got hit today as well. So let's take a look at the gold and understand what we've got. For the week, you're down three quarters of a percent roughly, getting a little bit of a correction on a close-only chart. When you take a look at what the gold did, you've had this run up. I've been looking for a pullback in the market. I made mention of that uh, this morning to people. I was saying it in all my subscriber letters that I think you can pull back a little bit. And now the question is the support. And I pointed out to you that I thought that the 18-day average would move up to support the market. My instincts are, chart-wise, that you're going to see buyers try to come in at 2492.60 with stops under this low. Now, could you get knocked around as uh, Powell says different things, the market interprets it? Yes. What typically happens? Well, in most years, you don't move a lot off the uh, Jackson Hole Symposium. There are years, <coughs> excuse me, where you've had some good moves of almost about, what, 1.6, 2%. But historically, it's tamer than that. I, for one, want to go on record. I do not expect that he's going to tip his hand. I think he's going to, in some manner, use the word measured, that they will do what they do based on the data, what they see, and what the members believe about where the economy is headed, which is code words, if he says it in some manner like that, that they're 
abandoning pure data and they're trying to get ahead of the curve. Do I think anything's come out so far to warrant a 50 basis point cut in September? No. I'm still of the opinion that with all that I've seen so far, 25% cut is probably where they go. There will be those that argue you shouldn't cut at all. But I think the Fed wants to get ahead of the curve and do things in a quote-unquote measured way. I see the resistance at the upper Bollinger Band, the support back down here. I don't want to see the market under that. And you've got to correct a little. So the way that I teach charting, and you may not like this, when a market is overbought, do I tell my traders to come in and go against that market? I don't. They let the market get away from the overbought condition. It either embeds or it gets rid of that condition, one of the two. The gold-silver ratio, a bounce. Now, resistance back up in the 87 an ounce, that you need 87 ounces to get an ounce of gold. It's just a bounce. I don't know how far yet it'll carry. When you look at silver, it was fighting, and I want to come back here because we had talked about this together. It was fighting a battle for the past three days when it was get to the 100-day average in green and the Bollinger Band each day. Today, what the market did is it got through that. The market was overbought, and tonight as you're coming in, you're correcting the overbought condition in the market. You might be able to slip back to 2870 to try to find more support. But again, you have an overbought market. In the copper market, the battlegrounds right now, and you see it, the 200-day average, <coughs> excuse me there, the coughing still from that COVID, to the upper part, you saw today that the uh, FDA did approve the new vaccines for COVID. A lot of people are getting what I caught. It has really spread. And this one lingers longer than the others that I've had. It's a cough. You're not contagious anymore, but it's annoying. You got a higher high, lower and low, overbought in this market. In the platinum market, as I said yesterday, the question in the market was, in my opinion at least, this is where we were yesterday, do you have the momentum to get up to the 100-day average in the Bollinger Band where I expected some pretty good resistance, or is it going to fail here and fight again between the 200-day average down to the 18? As you can see, that's just what it did. Now the question is, where is it going? It's not telling you. It's just hanging there at the 18-day average doing nothing. And in the dollar index, you still have an embedded red reading. I think the pros, if you don't lose this reading, that's the key. If the red line can stay under 21, we'll sell any further rally in the market. But if it gets over 21, I don't think they'll hold on to the short positions. They'll evacuate them, wait a day, and see if they re-embed the day after they're lost. That's pretty much how I'm reading what this market does. Now, you know, you hear me talk about all this, but you can see me do it in real time, per se, when I record in the morning, which is about 6 a.m. Central Time, my morning video. I'm doing that in real time, and then I get it published to you and out into your hand maybe 30 minutes later. You see what I'm seeing, why I'm seeing it. I'll cover what I said the night before in my written commentary and trade recommendations and bring up the day's events, what's going on, the reports that are going, did something happen in Europe or Asia we should look at. You'll get with this, and I want to give it to you for free for a couple of weeks, my written recommendations, my entry and exit points, how you work with all this. So to get this, it's pretty simple. You go to free offers in our iRapstein website. I cover all the markets you're seeing. The charts will look this way, and I swing back and forth between weekly and daily charts, always looking how long can we hold the trade, blah, 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 that type of idea. And you get our mobile QT device. You can watch the charts on that. You can get quotes right on it. You can hear our oral commentaries from different people at Lynn, the high tower people, all comes through here, and all the special reports that Lynn puts out. So how do you get this? Again, you go to www.irapstein.com. When you get there, all you need to do is go to the free offers area, or if you wanted to subscribe, you go to the research. But irapstein.com, if you haven't tried my free research, give it a try. It's that simple. It lasts for about a week and a half, two weeks, and then you're off it and you can't get back on it. You either subscribe or you don't.
I'm Ira, you have yourself a great day. I can't wait for the morning, as you can imagine, and I'll have analysis for you on that over the weekend. You take care.